Welcome back, pet parent. So when we think about food for our dogs, of course, we talk about food a lot. Why wouldn't we? It's the foundation of health. That is why we talk about it so much. And there's so much to learn about it. But there is a category of feeding <laughs> that became popular and then kind of everybody stopped talking about it. But it's still very, very valid for us to be talking about it. And that is ketogenic diets for our dogs. And there's not a whole lot on the market for you to look at when we think about wanting or needing ketogenic diets for our dogs. It's obviously something like as humans, we can alter our diets very easily from day to day because we just go to the store and we make our food however we want it from day to day. But most of us are very much in a like convenience <laughs> attitude or season of life for our pets, which is why there are so many wonderful commercial options. I'm thrilled that there are so many wonderful commercial options to feed our pets fresh food diets. And I know for me, anytime somebody brings up any sort of disease, but especially cancer, we're going to get into like other things as well. But like, I know that's top of mind for me. And we have so many dogs today that are being diagnosed with various forms of cancer. And it is the number one thing I think of as soon as anybody says the word cancer to me, my mind thinks keto diet. And then I start thinking of other things. So I'm really, really excited to have Katie Schatzer on the podcast today. She is with The Bones & Co. And if you haven't heard of The Bones & Co., I don't know why not. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Uh, it is a, for me, I've known about them for years. I feed them, even though my dog does not have cancer, I still feed them in rotation with other brands. And so Katie, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited to dive in with you on um, everything about the Bones & Co. And we can talk a little bit more, hopefully, about you know who this diet is for and why we would be using it. Yes, thank you, Jessica. It's really great to be here and excited to answer all of those questions. Yeah, so if we could get started with um, why did, so first of all, uh, the Bones & Co. does a raw food diet. You also have a freeze-dried version available, which is, you know, as we had talked about when, you know, we met, I don't know, a week or so ago <laughs> to plan this out, is can be more convenient for some people just in general, but you know, if we're thinking of traveling or um, you just never know to have in an emergency situation because the power goes out sometimes or whatever is going on, but it is a, a raw food diet and a ketogenic diet. So what, like, why did this come about? Well, I will take us back to the beginning. You mentioned that you've known about Bones & Co. for several years, and we actually just celebrated 10 years uh, last fall, which is a pretty amazing accomplishment um, as a, we're completely a family-owned brand. Um, our founder, Ryan, started the brand um, after, unfortunately, his family lost a dog to cancer. Mm -hmm. And like you said, too many dogs are affected by this, actually. Uh, studies have shown that up to one in three dogs will face a cancer diagnosis at some point in their life. And for dogs over the age of 10, those odds go up to one in two, which is just not acceptable. So that's always our starting point is we are here to wage war on pet cancer. Um, after Ryan's family lost their dog, his name was Murphy, he started you know, digging in like a lot of pet parents do and asking why, what happened, how can, how can I do better next time? Um, they had adopted a new puppy. His name is Rixie, um, a wonderful, wonderful little guy. Um, and that's when Ryan first started experimenting with making his own raw recipes and specifically the very uh, low carb ketogenic recipes. Uh, so that's our starting point. That's our story. Like I mentioned, we're still uh, completely founder owned. Uh, we are exclusive to independent pet stores. So that's another piece of our story is uh, we really believe in the value of this community of, you know, 2.0 pet parents and people who are 
hungry to do that research and, you know, the, the small businesses that are there to support uh, pet parents along the way. Yeah. And I just, because you said, first of all, I think so many people can identify with Ryan's story, having a pet pass away from cancer. It, it, it is affecting so many dogs. And I think I read recently that more dogs than humans or even now, I don't know how recent that statistic was, but I feel like I read it very recently that like percentage wise, more dogs are being affected by cancer than even humans are at this point, which to me isn't really surprising when I look at how we live and how much more um, susceptible our, our dogs are. You know, they don't wear clothes like we do to protect us from things. They're much closer to the ground. They're, you know, outside in the hopefully not glyphosate coated yards, right? Like, um, there's right. so, so many things. But I, my, so this just recently came up because my aunt last July was diagnosed with lung cancer. And when I went, she just passed away last week. And when I went to visit so her, sorry. thank you. But this, this story is so relevant because when I went to visit her in the hospital, right when she was diagnosed, I walked in and of course, knowing everything I know, though still not a medical professional, right? Nobody is listening to me, but I walk in and my aunt is sitting there with ginger ale and grape juice and jello and mac and cheese. And I'm looking around at everything they're offering her in the hospital. And I'm like, this is the exact opposite of what you need to be putting in your body right now. Like nothing in this room, like, yes, there is a time for comfort. Like when we know it's the end, okay, let's, we can talk about comfort, but, and, 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 what we can do to make ourselves happy, all the things. But like, she was just diagnosed. And this is our healthcare. This is not a healthcare system, right? But this is indicative of like, if this is what we're doing for us as humans, it's not any better in the medical establishment for our pets. And so maybe you can tell me, instead of me telling people, you're the professional, why is that not an optimal diet for a cancer patient? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad you ask. Um, and I, I even want to take a step back and talk about, you know, when you, when you identify those foods that aren't optimal, uh, there's one word that runs through my mind, and it's carbohydrates, sugars. Uh, and that's really um, where we foundationally want to start when we talk about the ketogenic diet. You mentioned that as a, you know, as a trend, keto kind of goes up and down and, Sometimes it's almost uh, helpful to remove that word from the conversation for a moment and really, you know, what what is the what here? And we like to talk about um, carbs and frame it up in terms of low carb for people because that sometimes can uh, be a little bit easier to understand. Um, you know, dogs did not evolve to eat carbs. Uh, that's the starting point for a raw diet in general. You know, when you look back at how their wolf ancestors, which dogs are more than 99% genetically similar to wolves. Uh, you look at how wolves ate, still do eat, they are they're, they're carnivores, dogs are carnivores. And studies show that um, when given the option, if you uh, give a dog the option to self-select their diet, uh, given a high carbohydrate diet, a high protein diet, and a high fat diet, they gravitate towards the high fat diet. That's how they evolve to eat. Uh, so when you start talking about ketogenic dog food and the way that we formulate our recipes, they are high in healthy fats, moderate in protein, and very, very low in carbohydrates. Uh, our recipes are no more than 1% carbohydrates, which is going to be the lowest you're going to find, um, even among most raw recipes, but certainly when you start comparing to, to dry food options. And why that matters is that it really changes the way a dog metabolizes energy. So uh, similar to us as humans, if you are eating carbohydrates, uh, your body is burning carbohydrates and even protein. Your body is going to burn glucose for fuel. And that can be a much more inflammatory pathway. You think about the, you know, the insulin spikes. You know, you eat a big lunch, you, you have pasta for lunch two hours later. 
you might have a lot of energy, but two hours later you have that slump. That's your, you know, your, your blood sugar spiking and then crashing. Um, and that's a really inflammatory um, metabolic pathway for humans, but especially for dogs. And on the flip side of that, when a dog is eating a ketogenic diet, they transition to using fat for fuel. Um, and that's going to eliminate a lot of those uh, blood sugar spikes. It's going to be a much more steady state energy burn. And that in turn is going to lead to less inflammation and disease. So, um, you know, it's a great preventative diet. You mentioned you feed it to your dog. I, I feed it to my dog. It's a great preventative diet for that reason, that it really helps the dog get back into their more natural uh, metabolism. But for cancer specifically, uh, to, to put it very, very simplistically, and I always like to, I like to add the caveat that, yes, there are a lot of factors that lead to cancer. There are a lot of factors that we don't even know or understand. So I never want to, I never want to minimize those. Uh, but speaking about diet specifically, uh, cancer cells feed on glucose. And uh, there's a wonderful story from an organization called the Keto Pet Sanctuary where, you know, a, a dog, it's a, it's a great video. I'll send you a link to it. Uh, a dog came in, actually, uh, you know, had this, what would have been a terminal cancer diagnosis. And, but she was pregnant. So they said, we're going to try this. Let's keep her alive long enough for her to, you know, give birth and hopefully wean her puppies. And uh, what they actually found through use of CT scans is once they put her on a keto diet and exercise routine, um, essentially she starved the cancer into remission. So of course, you know, not every story goes that way. I would say most of the time, the stories that we hear from pet parents are stories of a dog that was diagnosed with cancer and uh, you know, they were given a matter of weeks to live and, and they ended up living several more months of a very high quality life. They were able to continue doing the things that they loved. So um, we always want to look at that, too. You know, and none of us live forever, um, but where diet can also help extend the time that we have together and the quality of the time that we have together. That's that's a huge win. And that's what we're here for. It is. And, and that's an absolutely beautiful story. But it, again, like you said, there are so many factors in specifically a cancer diagnosis, but really any, you know, diagnosis of any, you know, serious illness or disease, there are a lot of factors. But, you know, we always say that you can't out supplement a bad diet. So it is, in my opinion, true that we always need to start with the diet and then we can go from there and make any other adjustments that, you know, we see fit to make. But it does always start with the diet because that is what fuels our body. Um, so, yeah, it is it is really for me um, an, an important part. I don't want to say the most important part, but a huge part of any conversation with with any animal and i know like you were saying um using the word or term ketogenic diet can kind of scare people off a little bit and i think maybe that's because when we think of it like as humans we think of it as like a fad diet when it's really not it's as you were saying we we put our body into like a ket um ketosis and where our our body is burning fat instead of sugars and carbohydrates for fuel. And that is, I, I mean, I don't think we can deny even in humans, I mean, we're all mammals, right? Like it is the optimal way to fuel our bodies like through, throughout history, throughout the history of humans, it is the optimal pathway for fueling our bodies. Which kind of brings me to a question that I remember when I first started researching keto diets for dogs, um, there was some information, and uh, please believe, like, I know as well as anybody else that you cannot trust everything you read online, but I do remember seeing in a number of different places, like, yeah, a keto diet is great for dogs, but it's also not good for long-term feeding. And I don't know how true that is. What do you What do you think about that? I think it. 
I, I hate to start with it depends, but it does, yeah. it does depend. It's always going to depend on the pet, on their specific needs. So I'm going to speak to the most generalized, most dogs, most dogs um, when, when talking about this and specifically talking uh, to our recipes, which most of our recipes are formulated with a one to one fat to protein ratio. And that's going to help support a dog going into what we'll call a light state of ketosis. Um, if you're talking a two to one fat to protein ratio, which we do have um, a diet that's a two to one, or you know, if, if you start getting into three to one or four to one, those really, really high fat diets, that, that would change. But our one to one diets, they are formulated to be complete and balanced uh, per AFCO standards for all life stages, puppies, large breeds. Uh, so that's a diet that, you know, I, I feel comfortable feeding long term on a daily basis to my own pet. And for most healthy dogs, it's a healthy diet. Um, again, because, you know, the, the fat in the diet is going to be burned for fuel. Um, you know, it's, it's really an efficient way for, for your pet to metabolize energy. Um, when, you know, when you get into questions of what makes the most sense long term, that's where you know, we would always want people to work, work with their holistic vet on, you know, their pet specific needs, because every dog is going to be a little bit different. But um, generally speaking, um, these recipes are appropriate for an everyday feeding. Well, and that brings me to kind of the, the next topic, which is who are these diets appropriate for? If we're specifically talking about Bones & Co. and what's available on your local independent healthy pet store shelf, um, how do you see, because, and we, we'll, we can talk more about the product line in a minute as well, but there's more, like you have the frozen raw diets, you have the freeze dried raw diets, but you also have some supplement food supplements, um, not supplement, not the supplements in the way yeah. a lot of people think of supplements, but yes. Um, yes. food supplements that are on the shelf. And so, how do you see bones and the bones and co specifically, like fitting into uh, a, a diet routine? Is it for any dog? Are you specifically tar targeting, you know, dogs that are in some sort of disease process? How does the brand kind of see themselves fitting into that? Sure. So I'll speak to, uh, I'll call the two most common uh, path pathways that we see. And first is going to be somebody walks into a pet store or, you know, gets on a, you know, a, a Facebook group and says, oh, I, my dog has cancer. You know, they're starting from the point of disease. They're starting from that diagnosis. That light bulb of diet is going off. Um, definitely these dogs, um, like I mentioned, a keto diet. And, and like you mentioned, you're always talking about with your clients that a keto diet can be so effective in um, helping to manage a cancer diagnosis through diet. Um, epilepsy is another um, a disease that we see, you know, being managed pretty effectively with our diets. The ketogenic diet actually in humans, uh, fun fact, speaking to it, not just being a fad, it actually uh, was first researched um, over 100 years ago as a treatment for epilepsy in children. So it's well established that the keto diet is very neuroprotective. Uh, so we hear about a lot of dogs that struggle with epilepsy and, um, you know, can really, in some cases, manage their epilepsy without medication on the ketogenic diet. Again, of course, before, you know, anybody ever made a choice about their pet's medication, please, 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 you know, work with your, um, your vet on that. So there's, you know, there's this group of, of dogs that are managing a, um, managing a chronic disease, which sometimes we separate from the way that we feed them. And of course, these things go hand in hand. Uh, but the other group of people, and this is this is one that is, uh, I, I really love these conversations because um, the potential is very different. When someone says, I have a puppy. I want to give them the best start possible. I'm looking for a high quality raw brand. Um, you know, they, they already understand the benefits of feeding raw and they're looking for one that, you know, is really going to uh, separate 
in terms of the quality of the ingredients, minimally processed. Um, of course, we still talk about the benefits of the low carb approach. Uh, but in that case, you know, the, the conversation is often much more about um, you know, just the high quality raw recipe that we offer. I, I can appreciate that so much. And um, it actually reminded me, speaking of, um, you know, keto diets for epilepsy, I was it's, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago, maybe a little bit longer. I was listening. I'm a big fan of the Mel Robbins podcast. And she had on um, a doctor, a Harvard doctor, Chris Palmer, and he is a psychiatrist and he has been working with his patients at the Harvard psych, I don't know, whatever, psychiatric hospital that they have there. <laughs> and that is one of the things he's doing with his psychiatric patients, seeing huge improvements in even people with like serious psychosis, bipolar, like he's putting them on ketogenic yes. diets and it is seriously improving um, their health, their mental health, which is absolutely amazing to me, um, but not surprising at all. Um, but I just thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> it is a, it is amazing, and I'm not sure if this is the this may be the same the same researcher because I also read something recently about ketogenic diets being used to manage schizophrenia specifically, mm -hmm. and how the diet can. They're, they're, the theory is that the neuroprotective aspects of the diet are really benefiting uh, these patients, but I think you know in the human medical community there's just like we just scratched the surface of yeah. understanding the connection um between diet and specifically um you know back to back to the glucose connection you know there's there's increasing interest and you don't hear the word ketogenic as much in that conversation but like the glucose goddess and there's there's just this increasing interest in weight so if i don't have these huge uh, blood sugar spikes. Do I feel differently? Do I sleep differently? Is my skin, you know, different? And that's really exciting to me because I think, you know, it's natural that we're humans, right? We, we only know what our, our experience in a human body is. So if we can understand these concepts in our own bodies, it makes it that much easier for us to understand how they impact our pets who can't, unfortunately, directly tell us um, what they're experiencing yeah. in their bodies. Yeah. Well, I know some people are even using um, continuous glucose monitors on their pets too, which is just amazing. Like the technology we have. And I absolutely love the glucose goddess. I wish I could remember how to pronounce her. It's Jessie something, the French lady, but it's funny I, how like, yeah. I can't remember how to pronounce <laughs> No, it's just, she, she, I've learned so much and it, it really, you know, that connection and then realizing how, oh, okay, you know, there's a lot of similarities in what my dog would experience. And I even think like when I feed her treats now, like I, you know, I feed her our, our raw recipes, um, uh, you know, most of the time, except when I'm traveling and then I'll transition to our freeze dried. Uh, but I'll even think like, okay, she's in a state of ketosis. She's burning fat for fuel. So if I throw a, you know, high carb treat her way, like, of course, she's going to wag her tail and eat it up and be happy, but she's going to feel good. And, yeah. and I think that that um, awareness is really important because it's, it's harder for them to um, communicate that back to us. It is, I know. And I think that is also possibly one of the ways that we can help pull the traditional medical community into a more holistic mindset um, is through translating it into humans. And um, I was talking to a friend the other day who is, I know we're getting off topic, I'm sorry, but um, I was talking to a friend the other day who is very much in the holistic pet community but her day job is in traditional standard, you know, Western medicine for humans. And we were talking about glucose spikes, or I think, I don't remember exactly what we were talking about, but we started talking about bread and how much we just love eating bread, right? And I was like, well, I'll just slather it with a ton of butter and you're good, right? And she's like, wait, what? What are you talking about? No. And I'm like, yes, like 
and I, and I told her to go follow the glucose goddess. And I was like, yes, slather it with butter and your, your um, insulin spike will be drastically low. Um, we think, so we how, think the same. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I think um, it can be having these conversations can be a gateway to help people who have the more um, traditional medical indoctrination, which is truly what it is, is an indoctrination to help us kind of move towards like a more holistic mindset, which is what I'm all about. So um, I, I just love how we can. And also, I mean, as pet parents, we can always do better for ourselves. I find more often than I think it's generally like two pathways, either something happens to you and you find holistic modalities and then you one day wake up and realize, oh, what is this crap that I'm putting in my pet's bowl? Or it's the other way around where something happens to your pet you find more holistic modalities and fresh food feeding. And then somewhere down the line, you're like, I really should be doing this for myself. And more often than not, I find the latter to be true in our community. Um, so anytime we can like kind of bring it all together and also give examples of how we can improve our own health and well-being, it's beneficial to, to listeners and, um, because I do really strongly believe that we can't take care of anyone in, unless, well, unless we're taking care of ourselves first. And so um, it really is important for our pet parents listening to realize that it is okay and not selfish to take care of yourself as well. Um, but that's just a little side note. And thank you for indulging me in that. <laughs> Absolutely. It's an, it's an important reminder. I mean, we're talking about taking care of our pets, but they need us to be, they need us to be here to do that. Yeah, absolutely. So can um, you talk a little bit about the product line and what is available to pet parents from Bones & Co? Absolutely. So we, we've already talked about the frozen raw diets, which that's the core, core of our product offering. Um, they are 95% meat, organs, and bone. Uh, less than 1% carbohydrates. So as I mentioned before, just just first of all, just a really clean, high quality raw food. Uh, we do not use HPP, uh, so minimally processed. Um, you know, in terms of the the most natural, unprocessed, whole fresh food out there um, is going to be in our raw diets. Um, our freeze dried diets are the same. They're the same recipe as the frozen raw. They're just freeze dried and, um, you know, in a, a really nice little bite sized format. So they feed really well, they feed really well um, with the frozen raws. So like I mentioned before, um, if I have a pet sitter, I typically leave the freeze dried for my dog just because it's easier, it's easier for them to handle. Um, and she has no issue transitioning between the two because the recipes are, the recipes are the same. Uh, we also have a line of goat milk and kefir, uh, raw goat milk and raw kefir. So that's a really uh, popular supplement in, in terms of a whole food supplement. Um, certainly, if you're feeding the freeze dried, you want to be rehydrating that in the, the goat milk and goat kefir. are going to add some really um, great nutritional benefits. Um, the difference, uh, the kefir is fermented while the raw goat milk is not. Uh, both are going to contain healthy probiotics as a truly raw, um, unpasteurized, unhomogenized product. But the goat kefir is really great if, you know, if your dog needs a little extra boost in probiotics. And we also have freeze-dried treats. You know, I spoke to you earlier that if you're going to all of the, you know, all of the effort and all of the care uh, to help your dog, you know, in a get to a ketogenic state where they're burning fat for fuel, um, please, please, please don't throw high carbohydrate treats at them. Um, it's, it's really, uh, you know, it's like if you were on a keto diet and you went to eat that piece of bread, it's, it's going to wreak havoc on, havoc on your digestive system. Um, that said, we all love treating our dogs. Like it's fun. It's, it's good for them. It's enriching. So we have a line of freeze dried body parts. Uh, so pig snouts, pig ears, duck heads, um, you know, those have been really popular and, and a lot of, I think a lot of fun for pet parents. They're a little macabre, but um, they're a lot of fun for the dogs. And then we do have a, 
a product called Bark Boost, which is essentially our green smoothie for dogs, and uh, Golden Boost, which is a golden paste um, supplement. That one, if you have a senior dog or a dog that maybe is prone to mobility issues, I have my pup has a she has a lot of basset in her, so uh, joint joint issues. Hopefully, we can avoid them, but you know, just just may naturally be in her future. So I add Golden Boost to her food just to help. Um, you know, help give her the best the best chance against some of those inflammatory inflammatory joint issues. Oh, and I can't believe I skipped over this because it's like it's, I don't know, it's not butter, but it's like the butter of our product line is this product we have called Goat Whip, which if uh, you're new to the freezer and you don't know where to start and you just want to dabble and have a little fun, this is a, um, it's, it's made from the raw goat milk cream. So it's really nutrient dense. Uh, it's got this really nice scoopable texture like whipped cream. And it's great for a lick mat. You can stuff it into a, a Kong or whatever, you know, toy you're using. But that one, that's just a fun one. <laughs> so um, especially in the summer months when maybe, you know, you're looking at, oh, do I do a doggy ice cream? Or what can I do that's, that's a fun treat for my dog? Um, the goat whip is a great option. And then lastly, um, we do offer raw bones. So back to the enrichment um, and treating our dogs, like there's nothing better than, you know, watching your dog just, just go to town on one of those raw marrow bones. It's so good for them. Um, it's good for them mentally. It's good for their uh, teeth and gums, um, really healthy. Um, and then great summertime activity too. We'll put them out on the patio and just let them be a dog. Yeah. And then the bone broth is great for yes, rehydrating the freeze dry too. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that one is a lot of fun in the summer as well. Um, we like to, you know, we have a little treat mold and we'll take the bone broth and make little um, popsicles. Um, you can do that with the, the goat milk and kefir as well. Last year, I actually um, mixed a little bit of the uh, golden boost the turmeric paste into goat milk and put it back in the freezer and have, had a little treat party with some of the dogs in the neighborhood. It was fun. Nice. Yeah. And I think that's um, something we don't talk about enough is the actual feeding experience for our dogs because so many people just kind of toss kibble in the bowl or even toss, you know, whatever, even if it's a fresh food into the bowl and set it down in the same place in their house day after day for their dog. But there's so much more that we could be doing. And it, yeah, it can take a little bit more time, even if we're only doing it once or twice a week to kind of make mealtime more entertaining and more fun for them. I like to take my dog outside and let her eat outside in the grass. Um, and my husband is like, ew. But I'm like, it's so natural, though. <laughs> like, they, love they love it. They love it. No. So using the like more supplemental, whether it's treats or these food supplements to do something really fun like that for your dog. I just, I, I think it's awesome to be able to have such an, you know, an array and a product line where you are still very hyper-focused on the health benefits of everything you're giving your dog, but you still have like options to make it more fun and be more creative and do different things for your pet. I, I, I love, I love that. Oh, I love, I, I, I'm, I'm consistently amazed by the creativity that I see. And, you know, even if it's just people will take photos and tag us in them. And I love seeing, you know, obviously you, you care in the first place if you are seeking out, uh, you know, a raw diet or a diet that has all of these different ingredients that you've researched and you've determined, you know, this is what my dog needs. So it's like, you, you care. We know that you care. But then the people that take it even a step further, and some of these, you know, these, these slow feeders or lick mats or whatever people are using, they're like works of art. And I love seeing just the care and creativity and, and really the expression of love that those become, because it, it is a way of 
taking a little extra time to make a moment for your pet. And it's something that I love about this community and, and I'm really inspired by. Uh, but even if you're not creative or you don't have time to do that, like you said, like sometimes, um, you know, sometimes I'll take our freeze dried and I'll throw a handful of what she would get for her, her meal. I'll throw it out in the yard because sniffing around in the grass for is so exciting. Like her whole body will just shake and, and giving them that experience is really gratifying as well as the pet parent. Yeah, for sure. And I, so I was talking to someone else the other day um, about, it was actually a quote of theirs that I, I brought up and, and I was like, he said, if you want soil-based probiotics, eat dirt, right? And it's like, for us, we're like, Ew. but that it's so Ew. natural for animals to do that because there are so many nutrients well i should say in healthy organic soil there are so yes many yes we should add that if you're spraying your yard please don't throw your yeah. dog's food in the grass if you're not right. spraying or your neighbors aren't yeah. spraying it's different but yes, we should always yeah. add that. <laughs> I know it's really sad to always have to add that like caveat, but it's true. It's just, it's true. Know, it's true. It's the reality of, of the world we live in. But um, yeah, so with, with the product line at Bones & Co, I mean, I'm, I'm just really excited to have, because I just, there aren't many option like i was talking to i had a client the other day whose dog has um a, a form of cancer in in the mouth it's really really nasty and so we were talking about doing a keto diet and she, i'm like of course i can create recipes for you that are keto based but she did not want to cook she's like i don't i just don't cook i'm not cooking i'm not i'm not doing it so i sent her on a mission to find Bones and Co. and in Alabama, and she's like driving an hour away to find Bones and Co. <laughs> but there's well, we might need to we might need to talk and see what we can do to to make that a little easier for her. Well, I mean, that's not the the issue. Is like there's not many options, right? Mm -hmm. So you're you're filling a hole that a lot of people don't even know is there, but it is, it is there. And you're filling a hole that a lot of other companies aren't even, even some companies who are like, yeah, we're pretty darn close. We could technically say we're a keto diet. Like they don't, they don't say that they don't advertise it that way. They don't. So like it's, there, there's, there's room. There's room. <laughs> I know you don't want me to say that, but like, it's, you know, there, there's, there is a market and to even have this brand available is so beneficial for so many pet parents, which is why I want to talk about it because we are in a, in a situation, um, right now where our dogs are really, really suffering. And I just find diet and nutrition to be like, this, this, I'm not saying it is a magic pill. I'm not saying it's going to cure anything ever, but it is not going to hurt. It is absolutely not going to hurt. And so this is where we need to start. So I, you know, I kind of, I, I feel so much the Ryan, the founder's story of just, that's how so many of the companies that we in the healthy pet space are so passionate to support because that that's how they start. I needed something for my dog and it didn't exist on the market. So here, here I'm making it, I'm creating it. And that's how, that's how we, we kind of make change. And, and I, I just hope that there's so much more on the horizon for Bones and Co. <laughs> I I can say that there is, and I know we're we're excited to see that this conversation is you know continuing and growing, and and there's a you know there, there's been an awareness I think for many years now that ingredients have to get better. That yeah, you know we can all agree that a fresh food diet is going to be better than a not fresh food diet for ourselves for our pets. We can agree that high quality ingredients are important, and you know, those are those are important first steps. But we're making those steps, and our pets are still getting sick. So now we need to have the conversation of, okay, we've really improved the the what we're putting in our dog's bowls, 
But now we need to think about how they're using it, how they're burning energy and how that's impacting, um, you know, their risk of disease. And and like you said, it's it's not it's not a magic pill, uh, but it's also it's it's something that's so concretely within our control. Uh, there's so many things that aren't within our control, but we have to feed our dogs every day. You have to make that choice every day of putting something in their bowl. Um, so let's make a choice that gives them the the best best potential uh, to thrive that we can. Yeah. And you mentioned that another part of um, kind of like the, the pill, one of the pillars of the brand is being exclusively in independent pet stores. And I kind of see that as, you know, the, the independent pet stores are on the front lines, educating pet parents and helping them make better choices for their pets. And unfortunately, the, the, again, just the world we live in, that education piece is crucial in making better decisions. Like most pet parents don't even know that there is something more that they should be looking at. It's not a matter of they're ignoring things for the sake of ignoring them. They don't want to hear it. It's they don't even know that there's something they should be looking for. And so these independent retailers are really they're the the they're the receptionists to, of the healthy pet world, Absolutely. right? Like they're the first front line. And is that kind of why you're at least so far like adamantly only available at independent retailers and absolutely uh we really believe in we and you know ryan really as our, our founder and the leader of the company really believes in the role of education that independent pet plays you know we Yes, we, I want everybody that listens to this podcast, I want them to, you know, go to our website, check out our social media. I want them to learn about Bones & Co. But ultimately, I want you to go into a pet store and I want you to build a relationship with someone who works there. I want them to know you. I want them to know your dog because they care so deeply. The, the people who are in the pet business, specifically the independent pet business, they're in it because they love animals. And a lot of them, most of them that I talk to, back to you saying that, you know, you can relate to Ryan's story. A lot of them say, I started my business after I lost a dog or after I learned this. So we want you to build those relationships because at the end of the day, that's what's best for our dogs. And it's also, um, you know, in terms of innovation and being forward thinking about our pets, about how we care for our pets, independent pet stores is where that's happening. That's where it's starting. Those conversations are happening. And yeah, and it's such a, it's such a human animal bonding space as well. When you're in person, when you're, you know, where else do you, what other stores do you get to take your dog into and they share in the experience with you? So I think it's, um, it goes beyond just the product. Like, yes, at the end of the day, we, we hope that, you know, pet parents are, are choosing our food, but we want to be part of that ecosystem and building those relationships because we, we believe that it's, you know, it's the whole picture that's going to build a better world for our dogs. Yeah. So um, I know I'm going to, I want you to tell everybody where they can find Bones and Co on socials and follow and do all the things, but do you have a store locator on your website we where do. people can actually find yes. where it is local to them? Yes. And we also, I would add to that, uh, we are in somewhere around 35 states and, you know, we're growing. So there are a few states we're not in just yet. But if you go to that store locator and you don't see a store near you, but you know you have an independent pet store, ask them. Like most independent pet stores, if they aren't carrying something right now and you call them and say, hey, I want you to order in this brand for me, they're going to be happy to do so. Uh, it's another, I think, really unique aspect of independent pet. I don't know. When I go to the grocery store and they don't have something I want, I'm like, oh, well, yeah, they don't have what I want. But like independent pet, no, ask them. If you're looking for something, uh, your recommendation is is really important. Um, and and but it's funny you say that happy because the, the client I was telling you about who like drove an hour, that's what she had. Well, that's what I told her to do. I was like, find the closest independent pet store to you call them if they don't have it, ask them if they will order it. And that's what happened was she found somebody that would order it. 
And so that's why she drove for it. And so that is, that is an important conversation to be having with pet parents is to ask for it because, you know, a pet store is going to carry what sells for them. And if you don't ask for anything different, they don't know necessarily that there's a demand for it. So please ask for it. And even like for, for me at my independent pet store, I, I rarely shop there. And what I mean by that is I rarely go in the store and pick off of the shelf. I am emailing her regularly. This is what I want. This is what I need you to order for, for me because she doesn't stock always what I want and or she may not stock enough of it. So like I will order cases of things, especially when it comes to like goat's milk, because that's a staple in my dog's diet. So I order cases at a time. And so I'm like, here's my shopping list. Please order this for me. <laughs> and and that's I, totally I the possible. Exact same. Yes. <laughs> that's totally possible. That's totally doable. And your um your independent pet store will thank you for the business. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because they're, you know, they're for the most part, small business owners who again are, they're in it because they love pets and uh, it's, it's not an easy business to run. They work really, really hard. Uh, so, so your support is, is important. So where can people find uh, more information about Bones and Co and follow you and learn all the things that, that you put out there? Our website is thebonesandco.com. Um, all of our socials are at thebonesandco. And I would say, you know, follow us on Instagram, check out our website. And if you ever have any questions, you can reach out to us via our website or shoot us a DM. And uh, we're a small team, but we're happy to help. And we hope we hear from some of you. Yay. And thank you so much for being here, Katie. I, again, this is just such an important conversation to have. And some people don't even know that it is an option and, or, or how important it is for a lot of disease processes in themselves and their animals. So thank you so much for being here and helping us understand that a little bit better. Thank you. This was a great conversation and I really appreciate it.